To be charitable, we would have to say Seattle's new landlord ordinances were intended to combat racial discrimination. But in fact, they endanger tenants of every race. Welcome to Wait Till You Hear This. I'm Steve Eastman. A judge has already stricken down one of the ordinances. It required landlords to rent to the first financially qualified applicant, regardless of any other reason. But an even more threatening ordinance is still on the books. It refuses to allow landlords to consider applicants' criminal histories. Ethan Blevins is one of the attorneys representing a group of small landlords who are trying to overturn the so-called Fair Chance Housing Ordinance. He's from Pacific Legal Foundation. Ethan, thanks for visiting with us today. Thanks so much for having me. You've had first-hand contact with affected landlords. Could you give us a sense of the outrage they're feeling? They feel like they uh, are basically voiceless in the city of Seattle nowadays. The city's very concerned with specific interest groups who tend to be advocacy advocates, supposedly, of tenant interests. They don't pay any heed to landlord concerns. And uh, the result is that uh, landlords are basically a, a target for Seattle city ordinances now. If it isn't enough that the landlords cannot protect their own property and businesses, it's even worse they cannot protect their existing tenants. Are you getting any direct or indirect feedback from the tenants themselves? We had a um, tenant contact us through the Rental Housing Association of Washington, um, who is a plaintiff in in this case. We represent the Rental Housing Association. I'm saying she was very worried about uh, her landlord being forced to put someone next to her, her unit who might have a criminal history. Well, maybe there's help in other legislation. Aren't there existing measures that prevent sex offenders from coming within so many feet of a child or school? For example, the Housing and Urban Development Guidelines from the federal government already require landlords to engage in an individual assessment of anyone who has a criminal history. You can't just say in your rental advertisement that you won't take any applicants who have a criminal background. You have to look at their individual circumstances and give a reason for rejecting them. This is already a highly regulated area, a fair chance housing ordinance that forbids landlords from looking at criminal history at all just adds to that. Well, here's a follow-up to that. How does the Fair Chance Housing Ordinance allow for protection against sex offenders, if it does this at all? There's a very, very limited exception in the law that says if someone is on a sex offender registry and they committed that crime as an adult, then you can basically ask the Civil Rights Office for permission to deny that person tenancy. But the Civil Rights Office doesn't have to grant you that permission. You have to prove to the Civil Rights Office that you have a legitimate business reason for not renting to a sex offender. And uh, there's no guarantee, of course, the Civil Rights Office is going to uh, allow you to be exempt from the law. And, of course, uh, most landlords and existing tenants would like to see a lot stronger protection. I'd like to ask you this now. What is Pacific Legal Foundation doing to challenge this controversial ordinance? So we filed a lawsuit on behalf of a few small, small-time small landlords in the city of Seattle and the Rental Housing Association of Washington in uh, King County Superior Court, and we are arguing that this violates the property rights of the landlords and also the First Amendment speech rights of screening organizations like the Rental Housing Association because they provide background checks to landlords. That's an important part of their business. And they have a First Amendment right to share that information, especially because this is information on public record. They have a right to share that, and landlords have a First Amendment right to access that information. Now, you're representing small landlords. What about bigger landlords, corporations and uh, entities like that? Are they uh, having any interest in opposing the ordinance? We have been in touch with the State Multifamily Housing Association, and they're very interested in this as well, and we're glad to hear that we're challenging it. As to whether they're going to move forward with their own litigation uh, at this point, I, I'm not sure what their plan is. They're still kind of strategizing. Is there any timetable suggesting when we can expect or hope for relief? 
It's always a little bit hard to say, partly because we don't know how quickly the city is going to move with this litigation. But I hope that by the end of the year, we'll have a ruling from a trial court that this is an unconstitutional ordinance that can no longer be enforced. I'd like to uh, shift gears a bit. I watched an interview you gave on Cairo 7, a TV station in Seattle. You said you thought that city council's motives were not bad. Would you explain that for us? For the most part, I think the city council has good intentions. At least I'm willing to grant them that. The problem with uh, the city council, and I think a lot of well-intentioned public officials, is that they don't think about the practical consequences or the proper way to address a problem. Instead, they think that their good intentions are enough, and that that alone is going to somehow fix the problem. The problem here being that the unintended consequences of laws like the Fair Chance Housing Ordinance, um, in fact, often have the opposite effect than what they want. So here, you know, landlords who can no longer look at criminal history have responded by increasing the rent or increasing their credit score requirement or, in other words, tightening up the other factors that they might consider in renting someone. And that means that vulnerable individuals who have trouble finding housing in Seattle, the people that the city council supposedly wants to help, are only going to have a harder time. Wow. I'm glad you're uh, working to do something about that. Uh, Just one more question, Ethan. Uh, What does Pacific Legal Foundation charge for its services? Well, we don't bill any of our clients, so um, this is free legal service. We're here to promote liberty and to uphold the Constitution, and it does not matter to us whether somebody can pay their bill or not. Well, that's amazing work that you and the Foundation do, Ethan. Thanks for taking time to be with us today. Thanks so much for having me. Ethan Blevins is an attorney with Pacific Legal Foundation. You can learn about this and similar cases at its website, pacificlegal.org. This is Steve Eastman for Wait Till You Hear This. Discover more stories like this one on our website, waittillyouhearthis.com. you hear this.com.